Now we will learn about comparing numbers. Since the equal sign is already used to assign variables, the equals equals operator is used to compare numbers instead. And it outputs true or false. So 6 equals equals 7 would be false, but 6 equals equals 6 would be true. And exclamation equals is used to check whether two numbers are not equal. So 6 exclamation equals 7 is true, and 6 is not 7, but 6 exclamation equals 6 is false. You can also do greater than or less than in Java, and this would work the way you expect. 6 less than 7, that's true, and 6 is less than 6, that's false. Similarly, 7 greater than 6 is true. but seven greater than seven would be false. And you can also do non-strict inequalities like greater than or equal to, so seven greater than or equal to seven would be true. Six less than or equal to six would also be true. As shown below. Now we will learn about Boolean operators. So the simplest Boolean operator we have is the exclamation mark, which basically just outputs the opposite of the thing to the right of it. So not true is false, not false is true. That's just pretty self-explanatory. And next, we have the and and operator which is true if and only if both of them are true. So if we have true and and true, we get true, but if we have true and and false, we'll get false. And now, we also have the or operator, which is two bars, and it's true if and only if one of them are true or at least one of them are true. So like, true or false is true, false or false is false, and true or true is true. And lastly, we have the XOR operator, which is used less often, and it's true if and only if exactly one of it's true. So true XOR true is false. True XOR false is true. False XOR true is true. And false XOR false is false. Certain examples are six equals six or seven equals eight. And that's true because the six equals six is true. So that's, and that's all we need. We have six equals six and seven equals eight. That's false because we need both of them to be true and seven's not equal to eight. Five less than or equal to six, x or six is less than or equal to seven, and that's false because both of them are true and we need exactly one of them to be true. Five doesn't equal six and six doesn't equal eight. That would be true. Not five equals six would be true. Note the parentheses. And not 5 e equals 6 or 6 greater than or equal to 5 would be false because 6 is greater than or equal to 5 and this is an or which means that the inside is true so then not true is false as shown below. Now we will learn about if statements. 
way you write an if statement is to put if and then inside parentheses a boolean called the condition and then inside brackets put the statements and what happens is if the condition is true then it executes the statements and if the condition is false it moves on so for example if true system.out.println this will run if false I print this will not run and then at the end I print this will also run basically what happens is if true means that it executes the statement inside so it prints this will run if false means that the statement inside won't be executed and then it just moves on and what's important is that this after we execute the statements inside or if we skip the if statement we move on to the statement after the if statement Java may be case sensitive but it's not space sensitive so we can do any amount of spaces here although generally you either do it this way or that way and you be consistent here's an example pretend we have a variable n of type int which we don't know its value and we want to print yes if it's even and positive and no otherwise so the way we would do this is if n is even that's n percent 2 is 0 and positive so if n is greater than 0 then I print yes and otherwise so if not n percent 2 is 0 and n is greater than 0 then print no and what we would get is no because 37 is not even so you can see that we had to literally copy this condition right here and sometimes that's tedious especially if the conditions long so one way to do this is to use an else so if n percent 2 is 0 and n is greater than 0 print yes And then else print no. The way this entire thing works is if this condition is true, then I execute the code inside. And otherwise, I execute the code out here and then program proceeds normally afterward. And we get the same result. Here's another example where we want to determine the output of this. By the way, we can nest if and else inside of each other. So, first of all, 1 is less than 8. So then we go inside to this block. 3 is less than 9. So we go inside to this block and we print A, B. Then we skip the else because we already executed that block inside the if. And then we go into after the else and we print D. Then we skip this else because we executed the stuff inside this if. So then we print G after the else. As shown below. Here's another exercise. Determine the output of the following. So initially, I1 is 5. Then 5 is less than 7. So I1 becomes 2. Then this else is skipped since the if is executed then 2 is not greater than 3 so then this is skipped 2 is less than 6 so i1 becomes 10 and then that else is skipped since the if is executed so then it prints 10 as shown below and here's another exercise so B starts out to be true, then 
B is true, so this block is executed and B becomes false. And then this else is skipped since the if is executed. Then B is false, so then this is skipped since B is false. And then the else is executed and prints false. Then afterward, since B is false, not B is true. So then B becomes not B, which is true. Then the else is skipped since the if is executed. Then I print B, which is true. As shown below. One additional thing to note is that if I have an if statement without brackets, then I treat it as if the brackets enclose the next statement. So for example, if I had this, then it would print QWERTY and then ZXCVBN because true means that it executes this statement. Then we skip the else, which is that block. Then we execute what's afterward. 